our Vice Lab family, we are doing our weekly video, and this week we are talking about IVF costs. Why is it so expensive? How does it all work? How do these costs come together? What do patients need to know about what's involved in an IVF process and costing? And uh, in case you don't know, I am Callista Hardwick. I'm the marketing manager for Vitalab, and we're going to be chatting with Dr. Lawrence Gobitz tonight. Hi all, um, good evening. And uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Lawrence Gobitz, one of the medical directors and one of the five partners at Vitalab, um, both in Johannesburg and also in Umschlange KZN. Hi, Dr. Gobitz. Hi, Callista. Great to be with you this evening. Yeah, thanks for taking the time with us again uh, to tackle this topic. All right, so basically why we've brought this up is reception and all of us from a frontline perspective are constantly asked, how much is IVF? What are the costs in an IVF process? Why is it so expensive? We get inundated with these questions. And then patients don't understand why we say to them, but you need to come speak with someone to understand. Otherwise, we're just giving you a, a thumbsuck figure that might not be applicable to you and your circumstance. And um, so I really just want to touch base with you to explain a little bit about this IVF process and the costs and hopefully encourage people that when they're going to get this opinion, rather spend the money on a first consult to get an opinion from a fertility specialist, rather than paying a same specialist fee to another type of a doctor who in most cases would actually be more expensive because our first appointments are extremely affordable as far as specialist appointments go. Calista, you're absolutely right. And uh, at the end of the day, the fertility specialist is, is, is far more qualified to be able to give the patient an opinion because unfortunately, a lot of gynecologists tell a reproductively older woman who's 41 or 42 that she's still got at least another three or five years. And uh, that is not the correct opinion. So firstly, uh, again, as you said, sitting at the front desk and patients asking what is the cost of IVF treatment is almost like asking us how long is a piece of string because each couple has their own set of circumstances and sometimes if the female's quite young and has got a lot of eggs, she's going to require a lot less drugs to stimulate to get more eggs from her than what a reproductively older woman will require and therefore you start off with the drugs and the drugs can be anything from maybe 10,000 sometimes for older women up to 30,000, 35,000 rand to wow. try and get a similar response. Wow. So at the end of the day, each couple's set of circumstances is different. So we, we start out with a, a very important issue and that is unfortunately patients get the wrong opinions, they get the wrong treatment, they spend, uh, they spend their time treat, uh, uh, having themselves treated, spending a lot of money of an, on A, unnecessary tests that don't help the woman get pregnant, on B, unnecessary forms of treatment that end up costing them a lot of money, and then by the time they get to a reputable fertility unit, they've already spent hundreds of thousands of rand mm -hmm. and have nothing to show for it. So absolutely. certainly, yeah, you're absolutely right. Come to the fertility clinic and get the correct opinion. And just to say, well, IVF can cost you up to 140,000 Rand um, would frighten anyone away. And in most yes. cases, it's, it's perhaps half of that, you know. Yes. And again, in certain circumstances where we need to test the embryos and we need to get genetic testing and put the embryos in the freezer, those costs then increase. Mm. So once we've stimulated the female, we now have to take that female to the procedure room and we have to administer conscious sedation because you find some people get by by not giving the patient anything so that she's comfortable. Five people holding the patient down to get her <laughs> eggs out. Now, we are, we're not in the torture game, you know, yeah. and, and, and it is not a painful procedure if done correctly, but it needs to be done in a fully equipped procedure room that's got everything that you need to give the patient conscious sedation. Mm -hmm. We need a sedationist there who is also then going to charge a fee. There's the egg retrieval fee. In the theater with us, there is a fully trained uh, embryologist who is going to then work very carefully with those eggs 
and then eventually the eggs and sperm are going to go into a laboratory and there is going to be a fee for us to culture those embryos for five days in a very very specialized environment we have highly technical systems to keep the temperatures correct, to keep the pH right, to keep the humidity right. We need to give those embryos a very specific culture media to give mm -hmm. those embryos the nourishment that they need to grow over the period of five days. And then costs related to, well, now we've got to put the embryos back. So we need to take the patient back to the procedure room. This time, no conscious sedation is required. We do use ultrasound to watch what we're doing to get the embryos back. So there's another small fee for that. If mm. there are embryos that we can now freeze, because out of one cycle, the patient may be able to get two or three children without yeah. having to go back and be stimulated again. So we do exactly. have the option. Mm. And, 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 and then you have the cost for freezing. And then you have the annual fee for keeping those embryos in the freezer because there's no use by date or sell by date. You can come yeah. back as a patient. It's not like uh, frozen chicken in the freezer from Woolies with a use by date or sell by date. And you can come back five, day, uh, five years later and mm. have another embryo put back and then conceive again, not having to go yeah. through the whole process, which effect, effectively is much cheaper. Yeah, I think that's very important that that lump sum cost that they've paid for that first IVF cycle, if responded well and if um, a good number has been retrieved and embryos frozen, the frozen embryo transfers thereafter are a fraction of the cost of a full IVF cycle and they can complete their whole family out of that one cycle of treatment. So uh, they do need to look at that cost as well, which is why it's important to choose the right clinic um, so that you're spending the amount of money once rather than spending that amount of money maybe four or five times over a year or two's period um, and then still have to end up, you know, going for an alternative opinion somewhere else. You're, you're absolutely right. And we see those patients every day where, yeah. uh, unfortunately, they've had a lot of inappropriate treatment. They've paid a lot of money for the treatment. Um, they yeah. aren't going to get pregnant because of, often they'll end up coming to us. They've now got a uterus full of fibroids and yeah. uh, they should not have had embryos put back into that uterus. You know, that oven is not going to bake the bread unless you yeah. correct the oven. So at the end of the day, come and see a fertility specialist don't listen to what people tell you come and find out the exact facts what your specific set of circumstances are and what kind of treatment you would need because mm. often patients unnecessarily have intrauterine insemination where the sperm is so bad there is no yeah. way that the patient will conceive with exactly. that with that form of treatment so yeah. at the end of the day it's vital to find out exactly what it's about because ultimately you end up paying less to get your live born baby if your treatment is appropriate Correct. I think that's what's important, that they, the patients need to have a bit of a mind shift, that when you are, you know, shopping around for the tiles in your house, <laughs> yes. you can look for the discounts, right, and, and, and try to get a good deal. But this is not something like you hear that buzzword all the time, low cost IVF or a low stim IVF. Um, and people want to start bargaining at that level. And I think it's important to have that mind shift that there is a good reason for why you want to go to a reputable clinic, why you want some, a clinic that has a bigger staff complement, that has a good laboratory, that has good statistics and has years and years behind them so that you are making that wise decision because in the long run, it will cost you less. Absolutely. Um, and it's an unfortunate thing that patients think that um you're you're more experienced and your your uh, higher your your ivf units that that uh, get a lot of good pregnancies um end up being far more expensive mm. but at the end of the day if you do your treatment correctly you may not need more than one or two embryo transfers and you take home your baby so Absolutely. again as as we say uh you know good group is deed group there we uh, go. You know, cheap, cheap, cheap is expensive at the end of the day. And in, yeah. in my almost 31 years of doing IVF, I've watched the low cost IVF issue. And yes, one yeah. would like to make fertility treatment available to everybody. Unfortunately, yeah. it is. And if you need good infertility, A, evaluation and B, treatment to take mm. home a live baby, unfortunately, it does cost. 
And uh, for that, we are doing our best to try and get medical aids involved because right. um, infertility is a prescribed minimum benefit, which does say that by right, medical aids should be compelled to contribute towards fertility treatment. Absolutely. There are hopefully um, good things coming out of all the negotiations that have happened between um, fertility doctors, the medical aid, IFASA, and hopefully we will start seeing a positive move towards health funders funding a portion of your IVF treatment. And in some countries where there's negative growth in the population, like Sweden, every IVF attempt is paid for by the government. Wow. On, the, on the provisor, you only put one embryo back. So, you know, they do their best to try and curb multiple pregnancies. Mm. But yes, mm. we need uh, the man in the street to stand up. They need to stand up for the fact that infertility is more common than tonsillitis or appendicitis. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it is also an illness. And Correct. it's an illness that needs to be treated. And Barat, if you are today paying towards a good health fund to help you under circumstances of, of illness and other conditions that require treatment, you should be able to get a contribution from your health funder. So let's all stand together and fight for it. And let's have a large voice, okay? And when, whenever you hear of AGMs, of medical aids, at, of your specific me medical aid, go and attend the, HM, the, the AGM and put your mm -hmm. hand up. Put your hand up and fight for it. So we need the man in the street to also have a voice and to help us to get there. And hopefully next year we'll have a contribution towards uh, IVF coming across from some of the bigger health funders. Mm, that would be amazing. I think I also just want us to, you know, to, to put it out there that a first consultation with a fertility specialist, I mean, now at this point in time, which is 2020, um, and at Vitalab, it's costing only 2,100 Rand. And frankly, I pay more than that just for my gynae visits. So there really isn't a big cost attached to going and seeing the fertility specialist and speaking and understanding and getting that information before you make your decision about um, where you want to go for treatment and what type of treatment you're wanting to follow. Um, and I think it's, it's good advice. Like with most things in life, you don't always want to just also take the first opinion or the first thing that is given to you. Get your right facts, your right information, look into the clinic, look into those costs by getting that opinion. 100%. And, and uh, I think the way that, that, as Callista's pointed out, the way that we can help you as patients is for you to come and see us at a cost that's cheaper than going to see your gynae for your pap smear. And at the end of the day, we can also do your pap smear for you. You will have a, you will have a full history taken. You will have a, have a full examination from the gynecological point of view. And depending on circumstances, we also examine the male. So both of you, and we will not charge extra for the male to be examined. It will all be included in that price. Mm. And uh, I think for more information, you can get us on our website at www dot vitalab.com go to our youtube channel at uh, youtube uh, forward slash uh, vitalab and uh, you can update yourself and as Callista pointed out we are going to do weekly updates on our youtube channel so again subscribe okay down below yeah. hit the bell and yeah. uh, wait for the next episode <laughs> give Thank us a you. thumbs up <laughs> absolutely like it some, yes. some, pa some patients may dislike the channel, but we're hopefully like, subscribe, and uh, looking forward to sharing more information with you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe, hit the bell button, like this video so that you can get all our future content. We will be posting weekly and you'll have lots of fertility treatment um, discussions, content. Click here.